All right, at this point um, in our project, we've been working on the, this index file and these other pieces. This has all been for the mobile version of the project. Go ahead and go back to your flash drive. You want to minimize things and go back to your flash drive of your project. Remember, I'm uh, working on a folder every day here with a date. Well, if you've been copying my work from the network folder, you see that my project is set up like this. I'm in today's project, and then I have desktop website, and I have mobile website. And all of this work that we've been doing has been in the mobile website. Well, we need to create the logic that happens here. Let's say we have up, we've uploaded this to a web server because part one of the class is to create a website, part two and three is to create a mobile version, a, mo an, a, a mobile uh, app version. In part one, it's a web still a website. So if we were to upload this, we would need a way for the person to be directed over to the proper one. If they visit my website on a desktop or laptop computer, I want to, to show them the desktop version. If they go on a mobile device, I want them to go redirected over to the mobile device version. So what we'll do is, at this level of the project, if you don't have this, if you only have this mobile website stuff, you need to create this structure within your project. You need to have the mobile stuff in its own folder and there's nothing in the desktop one, there, there would be, but there's a desktop website version and a mobile website version. They need to be separated like that. Because here at this point we're gonna have some code uh, that detects which one to send the people to properly. Let's um, Let's get back to Notepad and then we'll go to File New, File Save As, and you need to save this on the level outside of your project and save it as index.html. We already have an index.html in the mobile website. True. And we can have multiple index files as long as they're separated in different folders. So be careful here. Don't create a brand new blank index file and save it in mobile website. You're going to erase all the work you've done. We're going to create this brand new index HTML and we're saving it outside on the top level, outside of the desktop version, outside of the mobile website version. Save that. And then let's take a quick moment to create the one one more time this um, ten line simple HTML project. Remember our HTML five skeleton. Title will be maybe just welcome. Body H1, uh, my SDCE. One paragraph to say go to desktop version, and another paragraph to say go to mobile version. Nothing fancy, not, nothing too interesting. Um, in the JavaScript, uh, we'll, we'll have the magic happening here. We'll have some very basic code, but then the JavaScript will do the actual detection to guide people. 
set something like that up, and then we'll set it up properly. Okay, so um, I'm going to make mobile version an active link. We don't have jQuery mobile or anything like that, so this will just be a plain old link. The link goes mobile website whatever the name of that folder is. If you've got a different name for it, of course you're going to put its path there, slash index. We don't actually have anything in the desktop version, but the code for that would be something similar. Uh, can, the, uh, can the HTML like, innately identify? Nope. Nope, the JavaScript will. So right now we're just setting it up as a very basic link that a person has to manually click. But once we're done with that, then we'll do it with the JavaScript. So we'll just set up something like that. If you run this index file, it'll be very, very basic. There'll be a button or a link that says mobile version. You click there and it should go to the mobile version. You click on desktop and it, nothing should happen, or you might get an error, that's okay. We don't have anything in the desktop folder. But we just want to make sure we've got something like this, then we'll write the JavaScript to have this happen automatically. I don't want the user to click, I want it to happen automatically. And that's called user agent detection. We'll do that in just a moment. Let's see how my code looks here. So you know, it's totally basic. Go to mobile version, click there, it's the mobile version. Go to desktop, not found, doesn't exist, that's fine. You, yeah. What line? Well, that doesn't matter at all, but sure. Was, was that what you meant? Nope, let me redo that. See, it still looks the same. That's a good, that's a good eye right there, but it still ran it as H1, I guess. And this still works, and this still doesn't work because there's nothing in the desktop folder. If you put something in the in the, in the desktop folder, that'd be good. Not necessary at the moment, but yes, I didn't see that uh, that tag. The tag was technically wrong, but it still accepted it. Okay, so what we want to happen is. For JavaScript to detect what the what version to show, JavaScript can detect are you on a desktop or mobile, and then send the user automatically where they need to go. Now, usually we've been writing our JavaScript in a script tag in in the body down here. This time, we're actually going to write JavaScript in the head as the last thing, because if this is processed line by line, we want the JavaScript to happen as soon as possible. I guess we can even put it before title. I wouldn't put it before meta. That should be the a very early one. And if it's up on the title, welcome, that shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. But we'll put it here. We'll, we'll, we'll put our script block as do this first before anything else. So the, the user won't even see pick. It'll send them in the right place. 
we're going to write some embedded JavaScript as the very first thing here. So, for fun, let's do this alert. Let's make a little simple pop up navigator, the navigator object dot user agent property. Save and run that. Make sure you spell user agent with a capital A. So this is in the script block in the head block. An alert navigator dot user agent pop up Mozilla on Windows with other stuff. Firefox 46. Okay, I'm going to go back. If I click OK, then it shows the rest of the page. If I run this in Chrome, pop up. This page says it's Mozilla 5.0, Windows, Apple WebKit, KHTML, Chrome, Safari. Okay, stuff pops up. Click OK, the rest of the page loads. I'll run it in uh, Internet Explorer. Pop up. Mozilla, 5.0, Windows, blah, 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 Trident, blah, 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 Media Center, InfoPath, like Gecko. So all of this stuff, all of this data pops up here. Uh, I don't think we have Safari on this, do we? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, there we go. So Safari, JavaScript, Mozilla, 5.0, Windows, Apple, WebKit, version Safari, 534. These are popping up and giving giving information about themselves. We don't have run Opera, but we have the Opera browser. If you run your code in Opera, Mozilla 5.0 on Windows, Apple WebKit, Gecko, Safari, Opera for version 40. So the user agent is information about the web browser. That's the really fancy word for that. The web browser is a user agent. And I'm saying alert. Look at the navigator, which is the web browser, and give me the property of user agent. So notice all of these are giving me somewhat similar to various degrees data. Um, let me load them up again right here. So here's Firefox saying something. Here's um, Chrome. Opera. They're all saying Mozilla 5.0 because nowadays all of the web browsers have basically evolved from the Mozilla main code. And one of the very first early popular web browsers, um, I think so, yeah, they've, they've all kind of branched off from, from the original web browsers with their own versions. So they, they pretty much all say that. Um, right here. The, the interesting part comes after that, because then they often say, well, what device are they running? These are Windows. This says WebKit, WebKit, this one doesn't. And then we see over here Safari and Chrome. This is Chrome, that's Opera right there, and this is Firefox. So if we were to run this on a Mac, it might say Mozilla 5.0 Macintosh Firefox. If we were running this on an Android device, it would probably say Mozilla Android, Chrome, etc. If you're running it on an iPhone, it would most likely say Mozilla, iPhone, etc. So based on this user agent, we can make some decisions, uh, some if-else statements or some switch statements based on the data we're getting here to make the decision, okay, this must mean mobile device, show the mobile device. This must mean uh, desktop, show the desktop. So, back to our code. I'm going to comment out that alert. I don't need a big old pop-up to tell the user that. They're going to get scared and say, did I just get hacked? So, next line. Comment out that alert. Next line, create a variable. We'll call it UA. This is user agent. This variable will hold that information navigator dot user agent. That data that was just displayed on screen, store it in a little simple variable.
Next line, we will create an if statement, if else. And there's many ways to, to do this, of course, but the way I'm thinking about doing it is let's focus on mobile devices. Uh, as I said, this, these are all saying they're, on, they're running Windows. If it was on an Android, it would say Android somewhere in there. If it was running on an iPhone, it would say iPhone somewhere in there. So let's check for the possibility if it's running on an Android device, show the mobile version. Or if it's running on an iPhone device, show the mobile version. Or if it's running on a, on a Windows phone, show it on the mobile version. If it's running on a Blackberry, show the mobile version. Or else you're not running on a mobile device, so show the desktop version. In this if part then, We'll say UA dot match. We have the UA object, we have the UA variable, which is holding that big old text. We're trying to match, we're trying to see, is there the following inside of this variable? We're trying to match a particular string. In the parentheses, we have a regular expression, slash. Here we're again trying to find a particular set of, uh, of, of, of letters or numbers, and here we're going to try to find it in a very specific way, Android. <coughs> the keyword Android most likely uh, could be found in the user agent. Now Android may be spelled uppercase or lowercase, we don't know, and here we're specifically asking for Android lowercase. So if we add an additional slash i, that'll mean case insensitive don't worry about uppercase or lowercase because if it was Android capital A this would not find it. Well I want to check is it, is it Android, is it iPhone, or is it Windows Phone? So is it this or this or this? We've seen that before. Or I want to wrap parentheses around the UA match part and yes you will have three parentheses right there and two over here. The first one opens the if, the second one opens that expression of matching, and then the next one is specifically the match method, opening close. So yes, we'll have three right there. Between the second and third ending parentheses, give yourself a space and then we'll do or space Try to match Android, or try to match iPhone, or try to match Windows Phone. So same thing in parentheses right here. To group it all together to easily view it. Uh, UA dot match, the same object UA, the same variable uh, method match. That needs open close parentheses, so I'll write them here. And yes, I'll have three closing parentheses again. I have two here now because that one closes the query, that one closes the match, that one closes the if, that one closes the expression, that one closes the match. So what we're trying to match is the string slash iPhone, and iPhone is different than iPhone with a capital P, so slash i, makes means case insensitive doesn't matter the case and we'll do one more check so between the last two parentheses or another expression to match ua dot match with its own parentheses. And even though um, together Android and iPhone are probably like 94% of the market share, there's still some Windows devices, especially with Windows 10. There's, there's Surface tablets and Windows phones and such. Um, we'll have one more match here, which would be slash IE mobile, Internet Explorer mobile on Windows devices, slash 
insensitive. And we could do one more for Blackberry and one more for whatever, but if you haven't heard the news, Blackberry, like two days ago, finally said we're not going to make Blackberries anymore ourselves. They've, uh, I think that means they're going to outsource it to other people in a very, very, very small capacity, but this pretty much is the end of the road for Blackberry, even though you might have thought, how oh, that happened like 10 years ago. Oh, Blackberries have spit, still been around. And we might say that about uh, Windows phones too, but I like them. I used to have a Windows phone for a long time, but they uh, kind of dropped the ball. So here we're checking for three possible mobile devices. The trick then is, if any of these devices is detected, send the user to the mobile version. If none of those are detected, send them to the desktop. And yes, this could catch a BlackBerry user or a, I don't know, a Nokia Symbian user or one of these alternative devices that very few people use. We didn't check for every possibility. So what we'll do here is, if it's one of these three main mobile devices, we're going to write some JavaScript here location this is a location object this is the web address dot replace method console object window object we just saw history object a little bit earlier to go back one space in history location object is the web browser's address so we're saying if any of these are tripped immediately replace the web address or go to in quotes here mobile website slash index.html the same address that I have down here where we have to manually click on it down here up here now is if this is detected send them on their way they never see the rest. If I save and run at this point, nothing happens because I didn't create anything with the else result. I don't quite have a desktop version yet, but just to show you that this should work, I'm going to move, for the moment, location.replace down to else. So now I'm putting it in the part where it doesn't match. We see here that we are not on a mobile device, so the else condition should occur. I'm going to force it for something to happen under else, which is to take me to my mobile version. Right there. If I refresh that, it checked and right away it took me to the mobile version. We don't want it to be so obvious, we'll do this on the else alert. You're, on a, you're not on a mobile device. That's what else is basically saying. You're not one of these three mobile devices, and there are other ones like Blackberry. Again, this is not accounting for BlackBerry. No one else is. So here then we get the alert. Save it and run it. You should get a, a pop-up, an annoying pop-up that says you're not on a mobile device. This is just to show you we're on we're not on a mobile device. run that in Chrome, it popped up, you're not on a mobile device, and then it leaves me here. If uh, I do open up my developer's console in Chrome and activate devices, specifically an Android device, 
and refresh. It did think I was on a mobile device and sent me to the mobile version. My location has been replaced. I was over on the top level index and now I've been moved over to the mobile index. So I can test it here. If I put that back on responsive, which is not mobile friendly, I mean, which is not a mobile device, just mobile friendly. It doesn't trip it. Being here in responsive is not being technically mobile device. When I'm on an iPhone, if I was on an iPhone, then that would trip it. I went over to the edit devices and I turned on a, a Microsoft device, a Lumia, that's running Windows. So I refreshed it and it recognized IE Mobile and it took me to my mobile version. So that's what this code is doing, detecting one of the three big possible uh, mobile devices. If it doesn't fall into here, it will alert, and that's just to show you that it would alert. But that would actually be more like location replace desktop website dot index, which there is no desktop index file, so it'll be a broken link. But if I had an index file in the desktop folder, then it would then it would work. I can I can do that by borrowing the index file this index file this detection index file I can copy and paste it into desktop and change it a little bit nothing in the script because I don't want it to do that welcome to desktop so if I open the index, it detected I was on desktop, it sent me to desktop. If I pretend that I'm on a mobile device and open index, it'll recognize it and send me to mobile index. This can be more complex, of course, with multiple checks and uh, being more precise. And again, this technique here is more of the adaptive web design, creating different files for different devices. We saw the pros and cons. The big con is it's more work. You're doing double the coding because you need an index file for this version of the project and an index file for that version. The positive thing about that, however, is that you can tailor your design exactly per device. The, more, the other method is responsive web design. And using jQuery mobile is a step toward that because we see that the device, the, the project does grow and shrink and that sort of thing that's mobile friendly to some degree. At certain points it doesn't look as good as it could but with more coding that could be fixed. But the responsive web design is the other way to do it, that one file, specifically the CSS file, is set up to display this project in different ways. It requires more coding in that aspect, but it's another way to do it. So 
this is all we really need at this point then. It's just a simple detection based on the user agent. Sometimes they also call it user agent sniffing. You are sniffing around to see what the user agent has and then making decisions on that. And this is data that every web browser gives out. The mobile web browser, desktop web browser, etc. This code won't matter to us when next month when we do the Android app, the mobile app, but we will be able to do a variation of this. In the tool, we'll use that on the next time. So this is pretty much it here. Any questions then on this uh, user agent sniffing? Yes. Mm -hmm. How would you find the, the specific uh, code type in for a device that might not be out, that might be outside, of, like something old, like outside of like Windows? I would need to do a little bit of research. If if it doesn't fall into any of these three or four that I know, I would need to do research, like going to the website of that operating system, and somewhere in the developer screen, it'll probably tell you. You, oftentimes you can go to developer.android.com, developer.iphone.com. There's often a developer's portal, and the documentation should then tell you. I would, I would go that way, and also I, I could do a search. I can go on a search engine and search up what's the user agent for X, and there's, it's documented somewhere, either directly from the provider or someone had put it together. And another way is if I have that device, I can run it on my device and see what the output is so that I can craft this user agent matching scheme. Okay, so we're gonna wind down then. Um, obviously our full, uh, for the moment, our, our project works of what I want it for the moment. The mobile website version, you know, we're still missing content. You don't have time to add the content. You could if you want to. Later on we could add that, like what are these sections of content for art. But the main structure, that was the whole point of part one, to develop this mobile structure to get an idea of what we can create using jQuery mobile. Intro to HTML, CSS, JavaScript, we still have more to learn. Then next month we have the whole topic of, um, well, what are the, what's the software and the code and the tools we need to convert this into a real app, a real app that you can download from the real app store. That's, that's what all of next month will be about. And it'll be, we'll be targeting Android devices in class, um, but our project will be then uh, compilable over to iPhone, Android, iPad, Windows Phone, Blackberry. We'll be able to compile it for all the devices. We're just starting with this basic web project. So we'll wrap up at this point. We'll have some lab time. I'll put my code in the folder and we'll do it again next week.